that's too political. Um, we don't want to talk about that because it's too sexual, it's too this, it's too that. Okay, so it's safe to say, and I, I fly my nerd flag real high, uh, it's safe to say that we're made up of nerd culture. Like, and yeah, nerd is the new sheep right now, but uh, it wasn't really cool in high school, was it? It was never really cool, but popular. I was not the first to pick to play any sport ever in any school ever. Uh, I would say 90% of our fandom is made up of people that have dealt with bullying in one form or another. Um, and the anime community to me has always been a safe haven for that. Uh, I have friends that would have never made any other teenagers alive if it wasn't for something like Hattipon or Otakon or Anime Boston. This is the one place we can go to get away from all that stupidity and all the name calling. This is the only place in the world where my blue hair is not weird at all. <laughs> <laughs> got blue hair. Uh, is the one dressed in the nun, or is it the dude with a doge shirt on, or is it you know, the witch blue hair? There's so much blue hair here, it's normal. Uh, but sadly, the weird thing, the reason I found it so important, not because, it, I mean, Reaching out to anybody that's going through this, you know, hard situation, I, I've always thought it was a good idea, but weirdly enough, and for those of y'all that don't know, aside from being a voice actor and a DJ and doing a million other things, I also help run a bunch of conventions. Uh, in fact, up until two years ago, I was a staff of Anime Boston. I didn't run this is way too big. I would never want to be in anything other than running a dance here. Uh, but like, uh, with one convention, I'm a double department head. So, from an organizer standpoint, the saddest thing I've seen is in the last five years, we've seen an increase of bullying within the fan of community itself. Mm. That is whacker than whack. That is the most stupid thing I've ever heard of. And I even said, I'm like, oh wait, now that we're now that there's a lot of us nerds, we get to act like the jocks. No, that's not okay. Uh, so I originally had this, this panel, and it's open to anybody and everybody. And I was told, I got a lot of flack from a, there's a gay actor who's an activist, and he gave me a real hard time. He goes, well, you're making this about way too many other things. This is getting away from the project's LGBT roots. Well, it says it gets better at anime con edition. Like, I don't think bullying is limited to LGBT youth. You can be bullied for stupid things. I know a girl that was bullied because she was pretty. What? <laughs> okay. <That's> okay. <laughs> I'm confused, but I'll figure you out. Kids, I've always said if we want to win any war, we need to send middle schoolers in because they're the meanest, most vicious. Oh my god. It's true. Uh, you can be bullied for anything. So this is not limited to. Uh, this is true, my sister's one of them. Any one group of people. Well, just as a show of hands, and this isn't like AA, you don't have to raise your hand, you don't feel like it. Uh, show of hands, people in this room that, are either, that either were bullied are still bullied or deal with bullying on a, a regular basis. It can be past, present, or future. I'll put two hands up in the air, two hands up in the air. Hey, I know more people. See, I told y'all, it's super AA. Anytime a friend walks in, you know, like, <laughs> um, I think I get used to it after a while. Uh, and that's what I thought. I, I don't expect to not see a lot of hands go up. What are the kinds of bullying that you deal with, either here or outside? Yeah. Um, pretty much it was just the, uh, oh, you're weird, you don't have the perfect body, so I'm going to bully you until you're pretty enough, or you just, you know, slink away from sight. That's Some body image and people picking on the weird stuff. And weird is. Oh man, we're just sheep right now. Look at, look at all the models. None of the models look like boring, boring people. They all look very weird. Yeah, yeah. Body image stuff is a big deal, and I talk about that a lot. I just did a documentary about bullying. I was, or I didn't do it. I was just in a documentary about bullying within the cosplay community. We talk about body image a lot in that film. Yeah. Um, I'm. Hi. Like, yes. Hi. <laughs> um, I'm a small person, so that's normally what people tend to do to me. Like small, short midgets from you name. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, are you are you just by height, or are you medically like? Are I'm, you, I'm just a small person. You're small. I'm you're just small. Like, like close to the ground. I just have plenty of advantages in it. You and I it. don't break things when we fall. Like, <laughs> <laughs> my tall friends have to worry. About I find advantages in it in being little now. I can run through a crowd no problem. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
coffee shop and I get called midget with big boobs a lot. Wow. Um, and it's mostly, and they do it all the time, like I'll bend down to put like a ream of paper in a coffee machine and they're like, where'd she go? Like they joke. Oh, coffee uh, like, shop. I thought you said you were in a coffee shop. No, copy, like, copy. That is a lot of hostility. For coffee coffee shop. <laughs> no, coffee like shop. Anti-Starbucks. <laughs> <laughs> no, like. Oh, share of uh, pricky customers. Yeah, yeah. Well, that, that, that makes more sense that you deal with weirdness in a coffee center. I, I've actually worked at a coffee center, so I feel you. I feel you. I'm going to see you. And that even happened you know, after, uh, even after you have left your childhood. Definitely. My bullying in the past has been um, because of tabletop role playing games and yeah. years past some of the bad bloods and gender. And that question by the president of your company a oh, yeah. much room in front of others mm. uh, about what you do on your free time. Yeah. Yeah. That talk about uh, and, and you're there, you're both there, you're in a suit and tie, you're in a professional environment, you're hearing this crap. Yeah. I have a friend that's a programmer that's a big Star Trek fan and he takes a lot of cover for it and I'm like I don't really like it. You're not coming to work in cosplay. What is it? Like, last I heard, I was allowed to do whatever I want in my free time. And what if I like to hang upside down nude and watch Reese Company? It's like, I can do whatever I want in my free time. Yeah. And a different job. Yeah. Increasing the in your face proselytized by a born again. Uh. Who's telling you to a born again Christian. Uh, I know. No. Oh, really? No, I get it all the time. I have parents who are born again Christians. I know. No, I do want to. You can't. I do want to point out something oh, nice. that I, I have to. Sometimes I have to say. I hope I don't have to say it in this uh, panel, uh, but I will. Uh, I want us to be real careful when we talk about religion, uh, because while, uh, man, there's a death that just happened that I'm tempted to bring up, but I'm being a better person because that person deserves no attention. Uh, while many people in many different walks of life have suffered persecution at the hands of people hiding behind uh -huh. religion, I think it's also important that we respect other people's religious beliefs. And uh, I, I was at an It Gets Better-ish panel, and it turned into just banging on other people's religion. And uh, I can't tell someone to be tolerant of me if I'm not tolerant of everyone else. But I know the type of proselytizing you're talking about. I, yeah. I, I live in Texas. I deal with it. I live in a house full of it every day. <laughs> Show. Oh yeah, no, definitely. No, I'm familiar. Like I said, Texas. Oh, I, I feel it. All the feels are now. Yeah. Try living with it. <laughs> Most really? definitely. My friend Brianna just wrote the most fascinating. I am black and plus size, and I will be Princess Peach if I want to. <laughs> dressed up like a character you like and live in that character's shoes for the day. Man, if I want to be drunk Totoro, that's my only explanation. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there was oh a girl that had an extreme cosplay and his role was like, shut down chi. I was like, wow. <laughs> but like, that's the thing. Cosplay is like, is your ability to just be something else for the day and to enjoy the craft of making your costume and whatnot. Yeah. I'm actually, I'm actually, I'm actually self-conscious uh, tomorrow. I'm actually dressing up as Luffy tomorrow, and I shaved my legs before coming here, and I was very self-conscious of that, doing that for the first time. Oh, but 
Bicycles do all of it. Yeah, I'm like, are you brother of mine was to tell me I should put a uh, great flannel on it and it would stop itching. Uh, uh, oh my god. Later, so, uh, <laughs> That's the most subtle thing I've ever heard. Oh my god. Supposed to do. supposed to, I mean, if you did it for your costume, you know, and you're not the only guy with shaved legs. Like, there's a million swimmers I can show you. Mm -hmm. They even have shaving parties. That's weird. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, the first time they're like, we're going to have a shaving party. Well, good luck. Have fun. Like, that's the whole point. If you're cosplaying is somewhere fun, you, sh you shouldn't worry about being self-conscious. Uh, the older I get, like, you know, weight is a thing to me. I was put on this medicine that made me gain a bunch of weight, and it was like, and it's even worse because people take my picture all the time, so I get to watch myself grow on the internet, literally. Uh, and I wanted to be thin. I, like, my best friend's daughter wanted to be dressed as Princess Bulldo, so I told him it would be cool if we dressed as Jake and Finn. Never had I had more fun poking my belly out as dressed as Finn. Because that's what Finn would do. <laughs> <laughs> it's so fun. Oh my god! Have fun. Have fun dressed as Luffy. And you'll be surprised at how much fun you have just letting it all go and just having a good time. Let yes, go. another Woo! face. Um, I'm gay. Uh, shut up. Woo! Woo! <laughs> it, 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 it comes up a lot. It's just like, oh, oh, oh gay. Oh. Uh, I mean, not like that, but like, you know, I mean, it's, it's like... Oh, yeah. Really vain. Like, oh, vain. How about that? My friend's like, man, that is so good. Ah. Uh. Oh, man. Like, they're like, oh, that's gay. Yeah. I, love, I love messing with them, because they, like, when they first found out, they're all weird about it. Yeah, but, you know, I start, like, my name's Greg, I'm gay, like, but, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Texas wasn't the easiest thing in the world. But uh, again, like like I said, as we're seeing, you could be bullied. How, just out of curiosity, are any homestuck people in the room? Just out of curiosity. I know I'm not being a good look at you. I know why. I know why. Right? How many of you get messed with because you're homestuck fans? All the time. You're yeah, yeah, that's homestuck. There's actually a group of people but on the West Coast them. called homestuck hunters. And they I go to cons just play to mess they pay money to go to cons to mess with people. I'm like, your whole calling in life is to buy a badge to go harass somebody while they're having fun doing something that, wow, this is... Please tell me more, Mr. Sociopath. <laughs> yeah, I mean, some people just like it for the fandom they like. So yeah, there's a lot of it everywhere. Yeah, since, since you raised your hand. So, I the last year I came out yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, at, at the place I was working at, I got a lot of black. Because I, I, I told people I was working at the church. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a lot of them. Now, just out of curiosity, and it's not, since everybody can't hear, um, and what's your name, by the way? Izzy. Izzy. Izzy came out as trans female last year at her place of work. Woo! 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 In the workplace, it is a very different thing. Yeah, and uh, like it pretty much got so bad that the manager stepped in. Stepped in. Um, asked me if I could leave. What? Oh my god. Yeah, and I was like, you know, I'm did they do it for them at least to like, hey, this is something I don't know how to manage? Yeah, or they yeah, okay. Yeah, they did it at that. They 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 were cool. The manager was cool. Yeah. They should. Yeah, they I have a friend that's going through that right now. She works in a law firm, uh, and she's dealing with man. And I used to work in a law firm, so I know there's a royalty system there. Like lawyers and partners are like this other echelon of people, and then everyone else we're just you know the people that get all work done. Uh, and she, her HR director said, you know, it'd probably be a good idea to just put this out in an email so that it's just out there. It's a smaller firm. And she did it, and the, and the HR was really cool about it. They were like, well, look, um, now if anybody has an issue with it, it's an issue for me to deal with, which was smart. And then it became an issue because one partner had a problem with it. Well, 
a part where they technically fired the HR person and they felt like it. Uh, and she very similarly had a situation where, and they, now, when you ask to leave, do they give you any kind of compensation at all? Yeah. Good. Yeah. Good. Yeah. It shouldn't always be that. You have to, yeah. you have to be the bigger person yeah. and walk yeah. out. Walk out with money. Yep. Good. That's where you're going. Yeah. I, 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 I use my legal name for the applicants that interview and stuff when they come in from the first day. Gotcha. I'm saying, okay, I, I actually put this and I explained it like, oh, why don't you just do that for a Yeah. Well, and here's a question, because somebody told me this the other day, do you find that the anime community is a very accepting place of transgender, both male and female? Yeah. Yeah. It's a pretty safe haven, like, uh, I think, I, I think that that's one of the things that we're seeing more and more of lately, is people feeling the ability to just be themselves here. Uh, and I think, and I'm going to mention the F word, uh, another group of people that gets picked on for what they like, uh, furries, I think, kind of moved away for some of that. Furries. furries are like, well, look, this is what I like. And I'm sorry if you don't like it, but this is just what I like. And these communities, these fan communities, have been very open, very accepting. So that's cool. Good luck in the next place of business. I know that's a new. Oh, cool. Awesome. That happened in like last year. They asked me to leave like last year. Gotcha. There is, um, so I mean, like, let's see, the types of bullying we've talked about, just to recap, uh, we talked about verbal abuse, we talked about uh, people, you know, racial issues, people, body image, uh, transphobia, homophobia, um, being picked on for something that you like, be it anime. I know a little girl who lives in a small town in Texas that they give her as much guff as the guff. When did I go back to the 50s? <laughs> <laughs> I can't say the S-H-I word. <laughs> they give her a lot of shit for, uh, for being into anime. Like she's treated like a weirdo. So, uh, I mean, like, so we talked about those things. Uh, Discrimination is another we've talked about. How many people have suffered the hands of physical abuse? Like physical bullying? Yes, yeah, I'm so glad I didn't learn how to fight until after all that was over. Oh, I did. Uh, <laughs> yeah, now how many, this is a weird question, and you don't have to, if you don't feel like you need to raise your hand for a friend. Uh, anybody be physically harassed or threatened currently? Okay, yeah. So there's a few, definitely. Uh, okay, because I'm going to talk about that in a little bit. I want to talk about, we could spend the, the whole hour talking about the things that happen that uh, allow us to be picked on, ways to survive these things, and ways to overcome, uh, find ways of dealing with that. There's one group of people that I do want to speak out for. Oh, I was like, there's something going on behind me. Uh, there's a group of people that I do want to address, since we're talking about different reasons people get messed with. Uh, do you, you or anybody you know, or do you, any of you know someone that just has a hard time being social or making friends at all? Uh, oh, man. That's awesome. And of those people that know that person, have you reached out to try to be that person's friend? Awesome. How many of you have seen the movie Bully? Just out of curiosity. Yeah, there's a movie called Bully, and anybody that raised their hand knows who I'm going to talk about next. Which one? There's two. The little bull. The, the movie, well, oh, not the, not the sexy movie. Okay. The <laughs> documentary. Yes. Not the one where oh. it's naked. No, the, the, the documentary. That was, I was like, oh, yeah, there are two movies. So one is very different from the other. Uh, no, uh, the one that was just recently made, the documentary that they fought real hard to have a PG rating and then eventually had to have an NC-17 or an NA, not, you know, not, an NR not rated. Uh, there's a little kid in the show that it hurts, it's so almost painful to sit through this film to watch a little kid who just doesn't have a friend. He doesn't have anybody in this world that he can call a friend. Uh, and the, the crazy thing about bullying and where it leads. Bullying leads to a lot of depression. Anybody, uh, anybody had to deal with emotional issues as a result of those things? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not, not shocking. Uh, the most important thing that gets most of us through those times is the ability to have a friend to lean on. 
I always, I, I've always said that like the ability to make it through a bad situation sometimes just comes down to one person. Uh, having one friend you can lean on and just go, look, I'm going to kill somebody if I can't get this off my chest. Or, you know, look, I don't want to wake up tomorrow. Uh, and having that one friend. So the one thing, while I'm talking about people that get picked on, I do want to also mention people that can't even speak up for themselves. And that's a certain group within our, even within our community, that get picked on just because they have a hard time socializing. Um, uh, let's talk about what to do about bullying, uh, and then I'll, I'll leave the floor open if y'all want to talk a little bit, because I want to have room for that too. But uh, how many of you have dealt with harassment at a convention, in a convention setting? So we'll talk about we'll deal with this with convention outside, and uh, we'll convention school and then outside. Okay, so what do you do at a convention if you're being harassed? Security. Yes, find someone in staff shirt. Look, every Boston thinks it's so hard to find staff to see and recognize. Find someone on staff. Staff love dealing with people that are a problem. We have great <laughs> people. Listening to what we're going to do with problem people. Uh, and, and all jokes aside, like, that's part of our function as staffers. We're supposed to make sure this is safe and convenient and, and fun for everybody. Um, there are other types of harassment you can uh, deal with at conventions, and this is the types of harassment that I see more often are not the kinds of things that will get someone ejected from a convention, but say you're in the food court area and a bunch of people at the home stop are messing with you. That's a different type of harassment. That's a different weird type of uh, clicky mentality. I just saw the most fascinating way to deal with that. I have a friend who is the most giant, scary-looking human being on the planet. Uh, and I hope he's in the vendor's room. If he's not here, uh, he does a lot of shows on the East Coast. He sells all the glow sticks and swords. Uh, he's the coolest dude in the world. He's got dreadlocks. He meets everybody with the words, hey, baby. Hey, baby, what can I get He's the nicest guy. And he's the savior. Xavier could crush most people between his fingers. He was a really big guy. Somebody got in his face recently and said just what I think is hateful things. And this is how, I mean, and he's so big, he has to lean down to talk to anybody. He's like this. Actually, his language was so hysterical. And he, and he meant it sincerely. It's what made it even worse. He goes, oh. Oh, I'm so sorry. You know, that hurts. Uh, I'm sorry, because I don't have anything but love for you. And I've never seen someone use such a hysterical reverse psychology on someone. Someone just basically told me about his trash. And he was like, oh, well, well, I hope we can work that out. I hope we get to a better place. <laughs> I hope we can play. When a girl was messing, uh, there were two girls, there were a group of cosplay, a group of Homestuck cosplayers, and there was a girl going, friends to let friends go Homestuck. And this other girl who was dressed in like some costume from a video game, I don't know, she goes, ew, don't be that girl. <laughs> like in, in public places, and you have the ability to get attacked. Not all of us make the right joke. I'll be the one that gets punched because I say too much. But uh, <laughs> if you have a way of going, hey, hey, don't, don't come on. Like, can y'all tell which favorite, which Pokemon is my favorite yet? <laughs> I'm eating pain. I'm eating pain. I'm eating pain. I'm eating so, yeah. so uh, there's, there's that. Now, like, in a school situation, this gets hard. We just dealt with like, physical harassment or something at school. Okay, so this is the one that's not fun to talk about. The first most important thing is, and I hate to do this, depending on your age, if you're really young, get an adult involved. And I hate saying that. Hate, hate, hate saying that. Um, they do something weird to young people that complain of bullying or harassment. They always say, well, uh, there's nobody here to back your story up. Oh, we can't prove that you're being harassed. 
And that's why I say get someone, whether it be your parent, whether it be an art teacher, we have art teachers are pretty cool, art and drama teachers are pretty cool, uh, volleyball coaches are pretty cool sometimes. Uh, there, there's different people that you can find, and somebody can find any adult. Try to get an adult involved and go to the administration of that school. Um, if it's physical, how does an adult remind them that that's not called bullying, it's called what? Oh. You start using legal terminology in an education setting, they perk up really fast. Uh, there's a group of people, and it's still not off the ground yet, that are working on a legal arm for bully kids. Like a legal arm that parents have to use to tell schools, look, you have X amount of hours or we're suing you. Like, you have X amount of hours to tell us what you're doing about this, or we're pulling our child from the school and we're suing you. Uh, I hate that because I think we're a very litigious country and there's too many lawsuits as it is, but that's the way some businesses work. Um, the other thing that most of us don't realize that we have in our possession that is a wonderful bullying weapon. I've got mine. Yes, you have it. You're already waving it. <laughs> Apple, Samsung, Google, uh, you name it. Uh, AT&T, Vodafone. If you have a phone that videotapes or takes pictures, use it. Uh, because many times, how many of you have ever been witnesses to somebody else being bullied? And that probably needed a friend. Get a video, get a video of it, get pictures of it, and don't let somebody go. Go tell the bully that you have that. No. Offer that information out to the person that's being bullied. Like, look, if you need my, if you need, you know, my pictures or my video, I'll be glad to give it to you. A school can argue with you, they can't argue with Motorola or Apple. <laughs> no. Because too many of those videos have made it out publicly. And once those videos are public, the school has a second problem to deal with. So, uh, documenting and reporting and helping people report bullying is also a really big deal. Now, if someone is bullying you in the outside world and it becomes physical, you have this magic number that you can call. And these men that have a different costume will come on. <laughs> I think a lot of times, especially males, I don't think we have feel the need or feel the ability to reach out to law enforcement to just think physically it's okay. Uh, and I've learned the hard way, yes, I do know how to fight, but no, I don't want to spend the night in jail. Like uh, and I know I've not spent the night in jail. That'll be the next one. Like, yeah, we just heard it in a Assault is a crime. Fighting in a bar just because somebody calls your name could land you in jail. Uh, and I think a lot of times we as, as dudes uh, don't feel the, the ability to go, hey look, get out of my face, I'm calling cops. Uh, and somebody goes, oh, you know I want to fight? No, I, I know how to fight. I have no desire to fight you. Get out of my face, I'm calling cops. I, I say it all the time now just because I have a, my friends call me hockey temper for a reason. <laughs> so if I just start saying I'll call cops, it's usually over pretty fast. Um, there is a type of bullying that nobody brought up, and it's something we never have time to deal with in this panel, and I definitely don't want to not touch on it. How many of you have either been or know someone that's a victim of cyberbullying? Oh, uh, wait, let me raise both my hands and my feet. Uh, that's, I call that my Tuesday. Like, uh, uh, Cyberbullying is the hardest thing to deal with. It's the hardest thing to give people advice on because uh, there's one general piece of advice that you can give anyone that speaks cyberbullying, and that's what? Well, I've got one better than that. I don't even say the name of that website. Uh, no, uh, what, what do you do? No, you just you don't, you don't pay any attention to it. Oh, blocking some people? Oh, they think they win. When you block them, oh, 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 blocked me. Like, yeah, I win. I never have to see your opinion ever again. <laughs> uh, but more importantly, if you don't respond to someone trying to get a rise out of you, guess what? That type of sociopath just moves on to somebody that can get a response out of it. Now, that being said, I don't always say you turn the other cheek. There are people that do things online that are illegal. Uh, I had a dude, no, you're going to love this, who said that I was a pedophile and that I go to conventions to touch, get ready, drum roll, little girls. Okay. <laughs> so I just kind of wanted to give him the Bozo Award anyway. I'm like, aww, I missed the first period of this class. <laughs> 
much as I thought it was funny, at the end of the day, there was a page on the internet that said I was a pedophile, which is against the law. And there are these other people that are better bullies than anybody. They're called lawyers. <laughs> Uh, when someone is trying to blackmail you or intimidate you or use the internet to say something that is neither true uh, nor uh, or you can prove that it has long-term ramifications on you, you do have the right to go seek legal counsel and deal with them. Uh, and by the way, <laughs> speaking as a person that has both black hat and white hat hackers as friends, no one is anonymous on the internet. Uh, yeah, there's some guys that are deep cover ninjas, but the majority of the people that mess with people usually do it on unprotected servers and <laughs> real easy. The guy that the guy that wrote all that stuff about me, you can trace his IP down to a block within his house. Like, and you can get a satellite image if you know the right server to go to. Whoa. Uh, so uh, I tell people when you're being bullied on the internet or when someone says something about you on the internet. Nine times out of ten, the easiest way to deal with it is just ignore it. Also note that when something is above your means of control and when it is damaging to you or harmful to you, go to someone and ask for a legal opinion. Hey, do you think I have a leg to stand on legally? Can I go after this person? Um, it's tough, and I can speak from that experience. As much as I thought that was funny, uh, to me, it looked like everyone on the internet every day was going to a page that said I was a pedophile. Here's the funny thing. Only the people that were unfortunate enough to land on that website. Uh, but in your mind, when you're going through that, that's not how it feels. So, uh, uh, a thing to remember, and this is not just online bullying, but any kind of bullying, the thing that as a victim, or as a survivor, I like that word better than victim, uh, the one thing we always have at our disposal is to reach out to a friend. And that's probably the most important thing. Look, just look around you. This room is full of rad people. Every single one of these people could be a friend later today if you like end up talking about the right show. Uh, <laughs> That's the thing. I tell people, you know, the older you get, huh, any, any older people? I know I'm not the only one. Yeah, a few less older people. Yeah. We don't count. We don't count. Yeah, the older you get, it's not so easy to just make a bunch of new friends, is it? I love when somebody goes, I made a new friend at the bank today. I'm like, no, you annoy some poor woman. Uh, let's see. Hoops, I saw a hand come up. We're talking about online bullying. Yes, and you're dressed as Suji Go, which is more cool to me. <laughs> Um, I actually, there was a girl I stopped talking to for like a couple months, her and her sister, and when I was still using my sister, Man, you just dated this conversation. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I want to get live from you all. What is that? Yeah. And so we were involved, and she sent me a message telling me, um, I don't know what your deal is, and my favorite part is, I'm passive aggressive, but if you want to fight, bring it on. <laughs> that's not that aggressive. <laughs> that's full on it. <laughs> so you're passive aggressive, but if you want to fight, bring it on. Yes. That's I'm aggressive. That's pretty passive aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm like, okay, this is not cool. I printed it off and I showed it to the principal the next day. And she tried to act, and he actually did something about it. He called her and her sister to the office. That is the cool thing right now. Schools are jumping on this, and they are trying. And I say trying. Is, is there anybody here that works in education, just out of curiosity? Yes, thank you. There are a lot of people that work in education that are trying to figure out this problem. And there yeah, are work. schools now that have fantastic state programs, like state schools, state rooms, state zones. Uh, there are schools now that actually train and have, you know, whole awareness uh, seminars on what to do with bullied kids, how to deal with physical bullying. Because in some cases, and, and now, do you teach? Um, Substitute. Substitute. Awesome. And do you teach? Yeah. <coughs> two subs, right? Two rows away. Wow, that's awesome. That's very cool. So you can, you can attest the fact that it's sometimes as an instructor or sometimes in the education field, your, your hands are tied as well. There's so many things illegal that you can't do. Like if a fight breaks out, you can't touch either, either child. 
that's where we are legally. Yeah, that's tough. So. that I met in my college who uh -huh. actually he's, he's a very proud gay boy yeah. and he actually dropped out of high school because of how badly bullied he was being yeah I kind of wish like hell I went to his high school because I would have been his best friend yeah and I would have been in the principal's office that doesn't always I mean that was me uh, I had a group of guys who used to love to be, they like, asked me if I was gay and then they beat me up so you would have been my best friend yeah we would have been your best friend <laughs> I just I go I, I would say I'm gonna get up gayer than when you do. <laughs> <laughs> you're just Woo! me gayer because you can't beat it out of me. Like, you know, it's one of those things. He got know. his PED and he graduated from my college. He's actually going to a very, like, prestigious yeah. college in well, Washington yeah. now. PED, SAT college. Well, now he's going to a very, like, high standard college in Washington, D.C. That's great, yeah. Well, the coolest thing about this too is that so many of us that were bullied actually are now working with people and, and what did people that helped? I did this panel in DC and a young man that wanted to just share his story he was sitting on stage and running my panel for me. <laughs> Which is awesome because he said the one thing that it taught him, and his story got really dark. He got very suicidal and Aww. went to school for a long time and, and when he finally did find a group of friends address some of the issues. Now he's, and he's become this very outspoken person at his school. Now he's working towards a program at his school for bullied kids and he's like a figure piece of this. So this kid was very inspiring to anybody in the room that was having a problem. Like, dude, come on. Here. So, uh, I, think it's, I think it's really cool that most of us that live through this are now reaching out to people and trying to figure out some way that you know, we can all put our heads around this. I saw some more hands and then they went down again. Uh, yes, the magic fingers. Some of the magic fingers back there. Yes, those are magic fingers, yes. Yeah. 
yeah. and that's I think that's the thing that I think like about yeah. the Aiken's Better Project that I love is its message is bigger than anybody that ever worked on it. It's that perseverance thing. Now, when that was going on, that probably seemed like an eternity, didn't it? You, you did, or you still are? Still are. And, and cheers for not being afraid to say that. Like, that's something that like, a lot of people... Yeah, a lot of people think that, like, a lot of people think that going to somebody to talk about problems is like something to be ashamed of. Dude, I wish it was free. I go every day. If it's that why somebody just bounce ideas off of, yeah, I'd be like, sign me up. Uh, so yeah. Myself and I can Therapy, tell you apparently. right now how much at times how much guts it takes. Oh yeah, definitely. It takes courage. Well, and the neat thing about having a therapist of nope. any type, whether it's a psychologist, a psychiatrist. Uh, sometimes in your explaining the situation, you find your own solutions just talking. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you just talk your own solutions right out of your mouth. Uh, so that's why I tell everybody, you know, as a, as a survivor, as a bullying survivor, one of the things to do is reach out to a friend because sometimes just having a few, uh, an hour to talk through something, you might find your own solutions. Uh, but I'm glad, I'm glad you, do you have a doctor? Do you like a doctor? I do too. I, I, I got very sad when my doctor was like, well, I think you're doing good. I'm like, I could, I could find some other, I could get into some trouble if I need to. I'm always one step away.